Hello, so we are going to look at creating Asteroids computer game using Pygame on Python. This is mainly aimed at my A-level students, but anyone can feel free to join along. Okay, so here I've got my terminal and uh, editing my file. I'm using Vim here, but you can use what Ever you want in class we tend to use Thony and I would highly recommend that for anyone who's a beginner to intermediate with Python it shows you what you need and hides a lot of the more confusing stuff okay so to use Pygame funnily enough we have to import Pygame then we actually have to just tell Pygame yes we're actually going to use you and initialize it okay so this is starting things off now we've actually got to create a display the screen so we're creating a variable called display and setting the display and setting a mode and in these brackets we want the size of the screen now we can just type in 800 by 600 or something like that or we can use global so we can easily change it later um, that will do for now. We can do other things on Pygame. There's a command called set caption, and that sets the total. Okay, so what have we got so far? Let's just have a quick look. So it starts and then finishes. It started initialize the pi game created a window which weighs at 800 by 600 and then it set the caption to asteroids and if we're really quick you may see there is said asteroids okay now we need what is known as the game loop so the game loop is what's processing every frame so every time in your computer game when it goes around this game loop it is recalculating where everything is it's redrawing everything on the screen and then displaying it to the user calculating where everything is drawing it on the screen and displaying it to the user and it's just going around that loop again and again and again and again until you quit the game so we could use an infinite loop for that but that's a bit messy so we can just say while well, playing is true and then while well, playing now in this loop we can set playing to false if we want to quit at any point so now that will just leave the window on the screen it will however hang because it's in an infinite loop okay we've got a pi game event now Pygame events is everything and anything which is to do with the user interaction or other interactions with this Pygame window. It could be moving the mouse on it, it could be pressing buttons, it could be giving it a quit command. And we can go through all the events in a for loop. So we can go for event in pygame.event.get and that will get um, all the events which are currently uh, waiting in the queue so when you sort of move your mouse all those mouse movements are getting put in a queue this command will just go okay what was the front of the queue process that take it out of that queue you can then process the code in here whatever event that was moving the vision uh, moving spaceship whatever that is and then it will go around and then do the next one and the next one and the next one at the moment all we're interested in is an event of type pygame.quit so any command which is telling it to quit we want to process it and all we're doing is saying playing is false it's a fairly simple program so far all it's doing is setting up all your pygame creating a loop waiting to see if it gets waiting going through every single event it gets and then if it's quit then it will exit so if we just save that and run it 
you can now see that we got the window it's only a black screen we can move it around it's responsive and we can close it awesome for the sake of curiosity we can print event and just see what all the events which aren't quit are okay so now we can see that we've got an active event we got a mouse motion a window event if I move the mouse you can see all sorts of events there which include the position of the mouse all sorts of things the mouse button down mouse button up so when I'm clicking things and tells you whether it's button one button two button three button two is the middle one button three is the right mouse when you press a key on the keyboard so we can see key up and key down and W being repeated all sorts of things so back to our program we don't need this that's just going through showing all the events which aren't Pygame now this is a working Pygame Pi game program I'd recommend just having something like this whenever I can start a program I probably just have something like this and then build on this okay we now can actually display something on, on the screen just a background we've got display display was up here so we set the display to the window what we can do is say display.fill and then we can just fill the background with a color we could just use RGB values that should be bright red but I haven't had time to display it so after we tell it to fill we say display.update and that will update the entire screen there we go so it's filling the screen then it's updating what's on the screen which in this case is just a red background then it's filling the background updating again it's just going around that loop forever and ever and ever until there's a quit if we're doing a space game it might be nicer to have something a little bit off black what's that going to look like that looks a bit nicer that's a bit more spacey if you want a stretch and challenge you can instead of do that see if you can load in an image and have a spacey image as a background with stars and all sorts of things okay this is our blueprint for the game now what we're going to do is we're going to try and create a ship now we're using what are called sprites you may have heard the term sprite from any number of things including uh, scratch and in scratch the sprites are all the different characters and it's the same in this so if you've used classes then this may make some sense if it's above your level then don't worry about it if you're in year 12 a level then it's something which you should probably be uh, familiar with so a class is essentially a blueprint this one is a blueprint of a ship and this is telling it what sort of thing it is so it's inheriting it's taking all the stuff from a sprite so ship is an a sprite okay whenever you create a class you create an init in it is the bit of code that will be run when the ship is created and the first thing we want to do is to call all of the setup code in the sprite and to do that we say super in it so that's calling this function but instead of the one which we're in is calling it for the super which is the parent 
so it's calling the sprites in it and that's just going to set up a few bits and pieces now what I want to do first of all is set up why not just go for image set up the image and all that's going to be is loading ship.png now uh, have I already yep I've already got ship.png in that folder so I'll just show you what's in the folder quickly when it decides to load okay that that is the ship so it's just a little PNG with that those dimensions so it's 51 wide and 89 high I got that from just to show you my sources Wikimedia Commons so this was a Creative Commons so it's free for everyone to use it. Creative Commons is very useful if you're making this sort of thing. And I'd say the first port of call. Okay, so we have our image, which is loading into self.image. And what we'll also need is the rectangle. Now the rectangle is the X and Y and the size of where it needs to draw. So the easiest way to get that is get the rectangle from the uh, image which you've loaded. That will give it the correct width and height. And then we can tell it that the center of the image should be let's say 100 by 200 okay that's created the ship that's given it an image and that's what will be displayed on the screen and it's given a rect which is going to be where on the screen and in what size it is so now that we've defined the ship, we need to actually tell the game to use it. Now, what we need is a list of all sprites, and this will just display everything in the game, all the different um, images, all the different characters, and that is a group. It's a, a sprite group, so it's got just gonna be a group of all the sprites, and we can do fancy things on that. And we're creating our ship, which is of type ship, mind the capitalization. So capital letters tend to signify objects. And all we're going to do is add that into the all sprites group. Now we've got an all sprites group just containing the ship. And this is where using sprites is quite useful because this program was just filling the screen with a dark blue and then updating we can just say all sprites draw and where do we want to draw it well we want to draw it onto this display there we go now if we run that it doesn't like all sprite because I've made a typo where did I make this right there there we go so it's put an image on the screen doesn't do anything as yet I'm not capturing any inputs I'm not telling it to update I'm not telling it how to move but is put onto the screen Okay, if we look at the ship again, this is just the setting up. What we can do 
is have an update command. Now this update is what it's going to be doing every single time it goes round that loop. So every single frame it's going to be running this update and this should be where you're recalculating the position of the ship and anything which needs to be calculated like is anything shot, um, are you losing a life, anything like that. At the moment all I'm going to do is put self.rect as self.image.get rect, so exactly the same line as before, but the center is going to be x. And x is just a variable, not just x, self.x. Now the self means that it belongs to this ship. So we've created a ship and it has this variable attached to it. Otherwise, as soon as we finish this function, the variable would just be discarded. But what we can do is we can create self.x. We can start with it as 100. But every time it goes around the update, it's going to update it by 1. And then it's going to set the rectangle where it's going to draw it on the screen to that value. So the center is going to be self.x by 200. Now that's created the uh, rectangle, has created the update function. However, I'm not telling it to update. So all I need in here is to tell all the sprites to update. Now that will go through all the sprites in the game, which at the moment is only the ship, and it will call the update on each of them. So it will tell everything to update all of your information, and then this line is then displaying them on the screen, and then this is update. The update and the draw, essentially, if you displayed everything on of your computer game every frame as you process it every frame you'd have everything popping up onto the screen as it's being processed with the update you essentially got an image of the game then in the background you're populating everything then the update command is when you take away the curtain and say there's your new version which I've been working on it means it doesn't all just pop up a bit at a time, it's all nice and smooth. So we've saved that, let's have a look at it running. There we go. So we have a ship which is just floating across the screen, it's updating with the X coordinate, you can get it to change the Y coordinate as well. You can change how much it's updating to change the speed, and we will get it so is changing based on the user input. So from this point see if you can mess around with it, changing the speed, changing the direction and see what you can do. When we uh, come back we'll look at actually controlling the ship and looking at the velocity and making it handle a bit nicer. So best of luck, try and get that working. Hope it goes well.